So I reconditioned a uh, old soldering tip and a soldering iron I had. Um, to get this out of the soldering iron, I had to use a vice grips and turn the soldering iron on and crank on the vice grips because of the rust and stuff in there. But uh, so I mounted the uh, soldering tip in a uh, in my electric grill and ran this across my belt sander like maybe for five seconds and it just completely flattened it out and cleaned it out to a nice tip. So this is about a hundred grit sanding block. <laughs> right there where the uh, vice grips grabbed. So here's a 320 grit. I'm just going to go over it. Let's turn this on high. Flip it around and do the other end of it. So here's your refurbished tip with a little sanding. And to keep your soldering tip from getting seized in here and having to use a pair of vice grips and heating this up and slowly turning it out and breaking loose the rust. I have this uh, Napa Anti-Seize, which I've had for, geez, 25 years. I use it on my spark plugs and uh, anything like that. It can support uh, temperatures up to uh, 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit or 470 degrees Celsius. So I think that's plenty for a soldering iron. And you don't need a lot, so a little will go a long ways. And it'll keep this from rusting out. Just a tiny dab of anti-seize will do it for you. Just smear it around on there. Wipe off any excess into a paper towel. Smear it around on your fingers, wipe it off. Slip that into your soldering iron. Wipe your fingers off as best you can because they will be all silvery and nasty. Same thing with the little set screw. Put a little bit of anti-seize on there because that was a real pain in the ass to get out. Once it's uh, been in there for about five years, just getting it out. What I do is just put a little dab on your finger and uh, roll the set screw around in that. Wipe off the excess. Put the set screw in there and get it started. Wipe off any excess uh, anti-seize. And then go wash your hands so this doesn't get all over the place. Take a paper towel and uh, some isopropyl alcohol. And clean the tip off of any residual anti-seize compound on there. Don't want this stuff getting in your solder. I don't know if it'll uh, affect your solder joints or anything of like that. So after you have your tip mounted and tightened down the set screw, um, you're going to have to uh, tin your tip. Or I remember back in 1989 when I went through what's called BEE or Basic Electronics and Electricity in the US Navy, Mr. Chen, he was a Chinese guy. He said, you need to ting your tip of your soldering iron. He's Chinese, so he's hard as fuck to understand, but he, he was really good at soldering. So um, we've got two solders. Here's an acid-based, here's a water-based. If you're working on electronics, you wanna use water-based because it doesn't corrode your electronics if you leave it on there. You can use acid base if you clean it off with uh, like isopropyl alcohol and, and, a, and a brush. But over time, the acid base will corrode your electronics. So this is more for plumbing, but it will work for electronics. It does flow solder quite easily. But as Mr. Chen said, you need to ting your tip. 
So ting it, dip your solder in your flux, and uh, just let it flow. Any place you see copper, you'll want to tin it. Flip it off of there, wipe it off. And now you have a perfectly tin tip to do micro mini type of stuff like this uh, TMC 2808 that I need to solder jumper boards on it. So see these tiny little jumper pads right where the point is that I need to solder. So I need to be uh, have a really clean point and a really clean soldering iron. So that's why I just uh, reconditioned my uh, five-year-old soldering iron. But that is how you recondition an old crusty soldering tip and how you prevent your soldering tip from sticking inside your soldering iron. So when I go to change this in another five years, it won't stick because of the anti-seize compound.